behind us is one of the first applications of uh, TC3 rib raft. So rib rafts existed before the earthquakes came along and it's an accepted solution on normal ground condition and TC1 and TC2. Um, however, this is the first time that Firth actually structurally modified the concept to account for the ground conditions in TC3. So in this special solution is actually slightly wider rips and it's a bit more robust and actually able to compensate for the deformation that are associated with TC3 land deformations. This is a world first. Firth has had a rib raft flooring system in the market for, for, for many, many years and very successfully. Post the, the Canterbury earthquakes, Christchurch earthquakes, <clears throat> we developed a, a beefed up rib raft, a, I guess a, a more seismically resilient rib raft for TC2 zone. Then we sort of said, what can we do? How can we find a cost effective solution? You know, one that was not only cost effective, but could be easily repaired and, and had less damage during a seismic event and also was able to be re-leveled if there was differential settlement. Well, we believe the system is, is probably around about half the cost of, uh, of other alternative uh, piled or, or excavated systems. So it probably would add uh, twenty dollars to $25,000 to an average house. Generally a system like this would probably take two to three years to, to bring to market. We came up with this concept with our engineers eight months ago. So you know, it's been, uh, I guess not fast tracked in the market, but there's been a lot of collaboration between CERA and, 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 and government and uh, uh, bringing this to market. Well, I think it's some uh, splendid uh, innovation uh, by Firth. It is a proprietary product that they've developed uh, to meet a, a requirement that we have to have uh, stronger foundations for TC3 properties. And what they've been able to do is take about 50% of the cost out of uh, a, a usual uh, response to that type of land condition. So yeah, I think it's a very positive day. Uh, probably two thirds of all the TC3 houses in New Zealand, uh, sorry, in Christchurch that need to be rebuilt, uh, can be rebuilt during the system and throughout New Zealand. It would be available for areas where liquefaction could be a problem. Because the Ministry has done a lot of work around uh, the technical solutions, and this is uh, consistent with one of those, uh, it's made the compliance pathway much easier. The councils can with confidence look at this and say, look, it meets the, the Ministry's guidelines, so they can give that the rubber stamp and sign it off and consent it. And that's going to just help speed up the whole um, rebuild process. If I go back and say what would be the accepted solution um, which is in the TCT guidelines. So when these guidelines were drawn up, we expected that uh, companies like Firth will come up and develop their own individual solutions. So the standard solution would have been as per guidelines, a very thick, very heavily reinforced raft or a surface structures, which is actually individual pots by a plate and then a timber subfloor structure on top of it. The advantage over here is that we actually combine the um, concrete uh, foundation system. We remove a lot of the concrete by replacing styrofoam pots into it, but we still have the ability to heavily reinforce it. So it actually we're using less concrete this way, but it's still able to get the old structural advantages in here. This particular solution has an additional advantage that can be re-leveled after a major aftershock, and that is the key advantage over here. If there is an event, and the system, you, you do get settlement, the, the system can be easily re-leveled. So simply pull back the carpets, <coughs> expose the jack points, and the system can be re-leveled within a day. You can be in and out of a house following an event within a month. On this particular side, there was a site-specific testing done, so we had to do, like in all TCT sites, two cone penetrometer tests. We also had to um, test the shallow foundation strength with scallop penetrometer, which is more a handheld test. On base of these um, geotechnical data, it actually was a specific design done by a geotechnical and a structural engineer to determine the, the depth of the webs and the depth of the reinforcement and the size of the pots. So it's a site-specific bespoke foundation system for the site. However, the concept is relatively easily applicable to other sites as well. From a structural perspective, we have several um, key factors over here. We have, uh, for example, um, steel that's a higher strength grade than um, reinforcing steel used previously. So this is a 500 MPA steel, which is much more stronger than previous uh, reinforcing steel. We have um, different size of the beams running through it, and one of the key um, advantages, the ring foundation around it is actually much wider. It's about 400 millimeters wide and it's about 300 millimeter deep. So this is the key thing. So it's the same system which we use in TC1, TC2, just modified for TC3. The problem in TC3 quite often is that the crust thickness, the layer which doesn't liquefy is very, very thin, which means the groundwater is quite high up. 
Now, one of the accepted solutions would be to actually under-excavate below the foundation footprint, replace it with hard fill, quite often reinforced hard fill as well. So this situation actually starts from the ground level up, and there is no need to actually go further down. The problem with excavation quite often is that you cause side wall instability, especially like on this side with the proximity to neighboring buildings. If you imagine you go two meters down, you will at least have three meters setback from the neighboring structures, fences and so on. And you will also affect um, the groundwater. So it affects the dewatering, potentially affects the neighboring structures. So we actually have this solution start from ground level up. The other advantage of the structure is, as you can see behind me, it actually is fairly high up above the current ground level. Now, a lot of um, sites actually have settled several hundred millimeters and now more flood prone than they were previously. And that actually uh, needs, means that the floor level now needs to be much higher up than it was previously required. This solution enables actually to build above it without actually intruding further down. So the individual components of the rip raft, let's start from the bottom up. So what we have over here is actually a compacted hard fill. We have only about that much of compacted hard fill. So we scrape the topsoil off, compact the top uh, the hard fill in here. Then we're quickly uh, erecting the scaffolding. As you can see, the scaffolding is designed to be actually quickly erectable. So we have the beam over here, quickly set it up, make it straight. And then everything else is actually falling in place already. Then inside we put about 180 millimeters of um, tidy slab, which will be reinforced with um, steel fibers. So we don't actually have to have big reinforcement into the lower slab, but just steel fibers that actually will be inside the concrete itself. And then the reinforcement comes here. So you can see it's about 400 millimeters wide and has reinforcement at the bottom and at the top. Now, if we would have here traditional shear reinforcement, we would actually require a lot more steel in here. But the innovative way over here is using a concrete which actually has steel uh, rips in it already. So that actually saves us a really complicated reinforcing layout. Then you can see what makes the rips are these styrofoam pots. The pots are 220 millimeter thick in this case, but they can be thicker and thinner. And that actually is a natural insulator as well. So this slab is gonna be less cold than a normal slab on great foundation. But what makes it truly a waffle slab or rib raft are the individual ribs which going in two directions along here. And the key performance over here is that the slab can bend in two directions or twist. Now, the innovative way over here is this little thing over here. So this is actually the jack itself. It's a relatively simple thing. And you can see it's every couple of meters within the slab itself. So we can actually re-level portions of it. And it will be completely casting concrete, has a reinforcement in there, and actually acts that this cap comes off a rattle gun gets into here, and then we actually can tighten it up and the slip, slab moves up. As you can see behind me, I've marked up on the slab an area in pink. So everything to my side actually could be completely supported in air. So the ground on this side could completely move away. There could be a large sun boil occurring just behind me. And the whole idea is that the slab actually like cantilevers out without any damage to the superstructure. So this is about two meters spun on a corner and internally within the slab is up to four meters where the ground can actually disappear from underneath it without any damage to the building itself. The system behind us has another technical tweak. It is actually fully relevable um, for several hundred of millimeters. So even if there's a large, large earthquake and the entire house tilts, because the superstructure is designed to accompany with it, the only thing needs to be done is open the floor plates up in a simple day using a specific rattle gun and re-level the building in a very simple process. So we have future-proofed the TCT foundations and more specifically the rib raft of behind us. So this is actually um, a solution that can be used on a majority of TCT land, but not necessarily TCT land. We have used this solution in TC2 and TC1 land as well, and because the solution is slightly higher up, it actually also fits in areas that are slightly subject to inundation, which a traditional slap on ground wouldn't have been up. So it's not necessarily a TCT solution, it's a fundamental foundation system that can be used in many, many different soil conditions. And not just in New Zealand, um, in Christchurch, but all across the country. So we have areas where we have organic deposits or where we have silts and soft sands. There it's actually equally um, applicable. I'm sitting here on a TC3 foundation prototype. 
And the prototype essentially consists of two concrete slabs. The slabs are reinforced with an innovative um, concrete that is reinforced by little steel fibers. And inside, we have at the corners the jack or lift system. The lift system is completely cast in and the only thing you can see behind me is a little black cup that covers the jack system. In case the slab actually deforms, we can come along, open the caps and using the steel bar to thread it inside and as it's being threaded inside, it will actually lift the entire upper slab and re-level it. And what you can see here based on the strength that this side I'm sitting on is about 150 millimeter lower than the other side. So what we're going to be demonstrating here is to re-level the side I'm sitting on. The foundation system is lightweight, I think it's strong, we believe it's very reliable, can be used in a majority of the TC3 areas and we allow our families to be back in their houses with a minimum of amount of time and disruption. We believe that Firth is developing at the moment a version for two-storey buildings, but also for commercial industrial developments. There's 27,000 homes, uh, probably about 12 and a half have been identified as having significant foundation damage uh, and a significant portion of those will be uh, available for the system. The system works as it is on new homes. We are looking to develop a system potentially to retrofit if you exist, lift a, an existing building up and maybe take the, uh, the foundation out, but this is being built for really lightweight, shallow pile um, uh, new homes. In terms of, uh, I guess, bringing the system to market, uh, all a home native needs to do is uh, have their plans, have their geotech reports, uh, bring them to Firth, and we can assess uh, the suitability of the system. We have a number of engineering consultants who can then design up, uh, design up the system and, uh, and, and we can have it installed. Anybody who, who buys this house in the future has a look at the Land Information Memorandum, we'll see it's uh, TC3. Uh, they'll be able to say, well, how was it repaired? They'll get the certification from a, a proprietary product uh, and have confidence that they're buying an asset that will endure uh, and will survive uh, a repeat performance. I think we're pleased to see some stuff happening and uh, the innovation at play and that we've got a, a robust technical solution that's going to be, uh, be resilient in terms of the house, housing stock going forward. I think uh, the response to uh, uh, various challenges that have come up in recovery uh, through innovative sort of solutions has been extraordinary here in, in Christchurch.